Say hi, Duke. <laughs> Just wanted to introduce you to Duke. It's my buddy. My furry bud. And we're going to make a video real quick. He's going to watch. But I wanted to, uh, I wanted to make a video on the Statue of Liberty. Um, a lot of people... <clears throat> You know, still think that we got it from the French. You know, it's a gift. That's what we've been told through school. And, uh, you know, we all bought it hook, line, and sinker, just like we bought most of the lies that they've told us. Um, but I wanted to kind of get into some of the hidden meanings behind the Statue of Liberty and uh, see if I can shed some light on it in a quick way. Um, if you see here, you type in Mother of Exiles and the Statue of Liberty comes up. It's known as the Mother of Exiles, which goes back to immigration. You know, people were exiled from their country, I guess. That's, that's the story they want you to believe. Um, to be exiled is to be cast out. Uh, but I really, I think it has a deeper meaning. I think it has something to do with the fallen angels um, being cast out of heaven. They were exiled from heaven. And, uh, you know, everything's got a double meaning. You know, you can believe that or not. But uh, once you do dig into, you know, most of this stuff, it all, it all seems to, uh, to unfold quite perfectly. And um, I just wanted to show you some of that. If you type in Mother of Harlots, in the Bible it says, uh, Mystery of Babylon is the Mother of Harlots. And uh, this is what you get from Mother of Harlots. Mother of Exiles, Mother of Harlots, quite similar, wouldn't you say? Um, but, you know, you can believe that one or not. Um, but the, the actual symbol of the Statue of Liberty has to do with Mother Goddess worship. Um, you know, look at here, this is an uh, image for Hecate. You will clearly see almost the exact same. has the torch in her hand, uh, a spear in the other uh, as a skull by her feet and two friendly looking dogs uh, on each side of her you know she doesn't look like she doesn't look too friendly to me um, but she's similar to the Statue of Liberty as far as the torch goes um, you know it all like I said a lot of this goes back to ancient Babylon ancient uh, Egypt a lot of mother goddess worship back there Isis <clears throat> Ishtar um, look at this one with the crescent moon. They worship the moon and the sun. Look at the crescent moon on her forehead. We got the torch. She looks real friendly with two snakes, two torches, crescent moon. Got a skull around her belt. The Greek goddess of magic and witchcraft, it says. sun god worship you know the the rays of the sun around the the crown um has a lot to do with the the statue of liberty it's 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 it was built on a hindecagram this is an occult symbol it's 11 pointed star um this is uh you know 11 pointed star in the occult is horus ra those are gods uh osiris Isis and see the pentagram you see the pentagram in the middle upside down pentagram I wish I could get it closer but it's not letting me get get any closer than that um, but as you can see it's an upside down pentagram everyone should know what that means obviously um, <clears throat> You know, this is something I found, uh, Emma Lazarus, when I was looking up Mother of Exiles, she wrote a poem about the Mother of Exiles, okay? Um, this woman was an American poet, writer, translator from New York City, and she wrote the sonnet, The New Colossus, in 1883, and she wrote this, The New Colossus, this is not like the brazen giant of Greek fame with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here at our sea-washed sun, sea sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning. Imprisoned lightning, I mean, 
that's Lucifer as far as you know I, I beheld Satan as falling from from heaven it's Luke 1810 I believe in the Bible you know I've mentioned that before a lot of the rock stars do the the lightning bolts they paint it on their face David Bowie you know you name it ACDC all of them they love lightning and they and they worship Satan so you figure that one out um, and her name the mother of exiles it says from her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome her mild eyes command the air bridged harbor that twin cities frame keep ancient lands your storied pomp exclamation point cries she with silent lips give me your tired your poor your huddled masses yearning to breathe free the wretched refuse of your teeming shore send these the homeless tempest toast to me I lift my lamp besides the golden door, exclamation point. Um, you know, <clears throat> obviously we took in a lot of homeless and whatnot. Sounds pretty harmless. Um, but as you go into this woman's works, okay, you find out that she's got some interesting themes here. In the Jewish synagogue at Newport is one of her selected works. And In Exile is another one. Progress in Poverty. The New Colossus. By the Waters of Babylon. So you're telling me she wrote a, a poem. She's from New York. She wrote a poem about the Statue of Liberty. And she wrote something about by the, that's titled By the Waters of Babylon. Pretty interesting. And if you dig, if you look at the New Colossus, okay, you pull up the New Colossus. It's a sonnet, okay, and the poem was, let me see here. The title of the poem and the first two lines refer to the Colossus of Rhodes, which was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, sometimes described as the standing astride the harbor, the sea-washed sunset gates, at the mouths of the Hudson and East Rivers to west of Brooklyn. The imprisoned light name refers to the electric light in the torch, then a novelty. Imprisoned lightning, electric torch, you know, that's just, a, I think, a clever way to disguise what it really is. But this is a picture of the, the new Colossus. Looks kind of familiar, right? Okay, and then you dig deeper, the Colossus of Rhodes. This goes back to Helios. It goes back to sun god worship. It says right here, this was a statue of the Greek sun god Helios erected in the city of Rhodes on the Greek island of the same name by Charles Chairs of Lindos in 280 B.C., it was constructed to celebrate Ro celebrate Rhodes' victory over the ruler of Cyprus. Colossus stood approximately 108 feet tall. The approximate height of the modern Statue of Liberty, from feet to crown, making it the tallest statue of the ancient world. It collapsed during the earthquake of 226 BC. So it's the, it's, it looks similar. It's the exact same height as the Statue of Liberty. And it's representing sun god, Helios. And what else is, what, what else, another thing interesting about it is, you know, it's known as the mother. It's known as a woman. But it looks a lot like Helios, the, the, the sun god. It looks kind of looks kind of similar you know look at the rays around the sun uh, around the head let me see see it looks like Helios and you know their whole thing is transgender you know they, they like to do the male and female the Baphomet is half male and half female that's that's what they that's the satanic statue the Baphomet symbol and uh, it you know a lot of people think that the the Statue of Liberty is supposed to be a man dressed up as a woman. <laughs> but, you know, 
either way it's the queen of heaven it's son it's mother it's mother goddess worship which is the theme of everything i'm going to show you a quick clip here about the mother goddess worship it's very interesting Yeah, I mean we've we've come, and that that when did you know that window is called the window of the whole craft? So, the ancient religion of Babylon, they all have one thing in common: the sacred feminine, the sacred feminine, the sacred feminine. Ishtar, the Babylonians; Tyre, the Buddhism; Fatima, Muhammad; Sophia, the Gnostics; Shekinah to the Kabbalist Jew. Mary to the Catholic and Shakti to the Hindu. They all have one thing in common, the sacred feminine. And the sacred feminine is going to take you back to the source of light. Because the light that resides in that place that Plato talked about, you need a path to get back to that light. This, this is important. She is the one to take you to that light. Now, I'm going to give you a guess. Tell me this morning, who do you think that light is? You remember what this subject's all about? Lucifer. He's... There's the Baphomet, part male, part female, with a torch over his head. That's the altar at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. It looks like a sheep. I'll do another video on that. See the giant sheep head? The ears coming out. It's the largest altar in the world. Okay. says Revelation 17 5 and upon her forehead was named was a name written mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth you know <clears throat> mystery Babylon was called mystery because when John had this vision of when he was writing Revelation through the Holy Spirit and he had this vision you know Babylon this this place didn't exist he was, he was speaking of a place that hadn't become a kingdom yet. And the, what, a, what, you know, what fits better than, than us? You know, we, we became the most powerful kingdom in the world. I just want to play this, you know, for you real quick. Well, I'll just read it to you. This is Revelation 18. And it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. I better play it. Hold on. Revelation 18. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, 
that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all fine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. So, and it says, and the merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. Alas, alas, the great city. And it says, what city, it says, and I cried and saw the smoke for burning, saying, what city is like unto this great city? What, what gets me is all the merchants, all the kings of the, the earth are going to mourn after this city. Well, what's more, what's a bigger city than New York City? Who buys more stuff in the world than New York City? Who makes all the other countries rich? Why are trade, agree uh, trade agreements are so lucrative to other countries? That's, once, that once New York City's gone, then that, that's why they're going to weep and wail. You know, I, a lot of people think Rome is Revelation 18. It doesn't make any sense. That's not Rome. Rome isn't weep. Nobody's reaping and wailing because Rome isn't buying their stuff. You know, I just uh, I just find it pretty fascinating. You know that it matches up so so perfectly uh, with New York City. You know, um, you know even Mother Nature and look West Babylon. There's an actual place in New York City called West Babylon. There's a canyon called Babylon Canyon. Out on the, the the border of New York is a Babylon Canyon. It's just and the, this woman has a has a uh, thing called by the city of uh, Babylon. You know she wrote this and she's from New York and it's just you know um, you can't make this stuff up. You know there's uh, there's some other stuff I was going to do in a different video, so I won't get into that. But you know I just wanted to touch base on this because I find it important. Um, that we understand, you know, what the Statue of Liberty really represents. So, uh, God bless you, and I'll talk to you soon.